Welcome to a special segment here on Fox 40, the Bearcat Breakdown 2.0, where for the next several weeks we'll get to know one member of the BU men's basketball team every week. Joining us first on our first episode here, junior point guard Marlon Beck. Marlon, thanks for taking some time for us. Thank you for having me. So first things first, a pretty exciting season so far. Unfortunately, you guys have ended up on the wrong side of the scoreboard. Ten points on the road to St. Bonaventure, 15 here at home to Army. But there's a lot of bright spots to look forward to this season. Your thoughts? I think they were both two good experiencing games for us. Um, both of the teams were led by their seniors, um, which we have no active seniors on our team right now. So, I mean, it was kind of just a good experience for us, like I said earlier. I mean, we kind of took out the positives from it. We just want to move forward from there, and I think we can all look forward to a better season ahead. Several exciting rookies as we've had here in the past few years. I know you're not too far removed from, from your freshman season, but Everson Davis, Thomas Bruce, and Timmy Rose all come to this program with a lot of promise. How have they kind of fit in not only with the team on the court, but also in the locker room? Um, well, off the court on their visits, I think they fit in from day one. I think that's a big reason why they chose to come to BU. Um, Everson, he plays hard. He plays with no fear in his heart every single day going against me in practice. Thomas, um, He's ready for war every day, coming from a good um, powerhouse school like DeMatha in our area. It's not anything different for him. And then Timmy, he's competing with me and Ev every single day of the week. So this is good for him. We're all making each other better, so it's not a big difference for any of us. Now, as I mentioned, you're not too far removed from your freshman season. You came in here with a, a, a class with a lot of excitement between you, Yosef Jakob, Nick Madre, Magnus Richards. Unfortunately, you know, things don't always work out. Nick and Mag are both gone. Yosef's out for the year. So I guess for lack of a better term, you're kind of the last man standing. Is that a little tough? It is a little tough at times, but I mean, we all stay in contact till this day. Us four plus John, I mean, we were kind of known as the Fab Five. Uh, it's kind of like we're the only ones standing out, but you have to play with the cards that you dealt. So other than that, we can only just move forward from there and just continue to support each other through our college experiences. Now, obviously, Yosef's still part of the team, you know, here every day, just out with an injury. What's it like to kind of have him on the, on the sidelines this year, kind of pushing you that way? He kind of serves as another point guard coach or coach David to me. I mean, he's giving, he was, he's not here this week um, getting surgery, but I mean, he was talking to me about both games, giving me feedback, supporting me, um, telling me what he thinks I need to work on. So once he's back, I can't wait to have him back on the court to play with me. He's my back court partner. But other than that, he's always there for me and I'm always there for him. Now, from a personal standpoint, you wear the Roman numeral two on the back of your jersey alongside your last name, named after your father. I guess, why Roman numeral two and not junior? That's a question we're going to have to ask my dad. I mean, I honestly don't really know the answer as well. I've always wanted to know, but just kind of went with it. That's my name. It's my birth certificate. That's just what it is. Hopefully, maybe one day I'll have a son, and if he's playing basketball, he'll have Roman numeral three on his back. Now, you spent a year in high school running track. Uh, High school long jump champion that has obviously translated pretty well into into basketball. You know, since you out there grabbing rebounds. But tell us a little bit about uh, your foray into into track. Uh, well, the one year I did do track, my senior year, um, it was kind of fun. It's a funny story. Um, me and a couple of my guys who are seniors on the basketball team, we kind of just did this because they go on a trip to Disney World every single year. But it turned out to be good. Um, we were all athletes, all playing different sports in college now, and it kind of just helped me because. Um, I did the 4 by one the long jump, and the 4 by 4 cut. So it kind of just taught me, broke it down the mechanics, and everything I needed to do just to become a better athlete than I already was. Um, just learning how to run faster, learning how to jump higher, and I think it just helped me translate into um, college easier. Now it's obviously paid off you know, here on the basketball court. You seem to be one of the guys that's always out there grabbing rebounds, which you know, for a guy your size, only 5'11", that's, that's pretty impressive considering you're usually one of the smallest guys on the floor. Does that kind of cause you to play with a little bit of a chip on your shoulder? I've always been the shortest guy on my team since about ninth grade, and it's it's really always been a chip on my shoulder. I was told at a young age, so I was hard over height. Never really saw a lot of height at a young age, so I didn't figure I was going to be about six five. But other than that, I mean, everybody's the same out there to me. Um, I'm going to play my game; they play theirs. And I just have to go from there. If I can run faster than you, I can jump higher than you. I'm going to use that to my advantage. Now, we kind of made you the guinea pig here for this segment, but the America East also made you, made you their guinea pig for their Twitter takeover. You got to do that, I believe it was last year. What was that experience like? Um, it was a great experience. Um, just getting in contact with the America East so they can get to see what it's like, see what everyone, so everyone can see what it's like, and just the daily life of a college athlete. Um, we're here in the summertime for about a month working on our game and also in the classroom. We're taking classes as well. So just for them to just see what we do, whether it's hanging out with friends, getting some, grabbing a bite to eat, or just working hard on the court, it's just great for them just to see that we're doing that, plus enjoying our time during the summer. 
Now, do you remember the password, or do you think they changed it on you by now? Uh, they definitely changed it, but they should definitely let me back on. <laughs> All right, well, we'll try and make that happen. Now, that, that experience kind of gave people a look into your life, so now we're going to kind of do the same. We're going to give you a little lightning round here. I'm just going to throw out a question. You give me the, the first answer that comes to your mind. So let's start with your favorite movie. Space Jam. For a basketball guy, that, that's pretty fitting. <laughs> favorite video game? Uh, I'm not really a video gamer, but I'm going to have to go with NBA 2K16. I'm sensing a theme here. Uh, <laughs> what's on your iPod right now? Drake. Uh, Drake, Future, Logic, um, those are probably the top three. Favorite sport other than basketball? Uh, I'm going to go with track because that's the only sport I can <laughs> And uh, your favorite professional sports team? Dallas Cowboys, go Cowboys. <laughs> Not a very popular choice here in Giants country, I'm sure. Uh, your favorite color? Red. Red? Uh, personal hero. My father. And finally, your favorite childhood memory. My favorite childhood memory would have to be uh, just as a kid, whenever I played any sport, whether it was football, I was a running back. Didn't work out, I used to run the other way. Didn't want to get hit. Soccer, I couldn't kick the ball to save my life. And then I played basketball, and for my first game ever, I had 24 points, so I just stuck with basketball. And that's where I am today, until I got here. I, on behalf of all the Bearcat fans here in the area, I think we're glad you you found your niche in basketball, made the choice to come here. Thank you for joining us here on our first episode of the Bearcat Breakdown 2.0. We'll be back next week with another member of the BU men's basketball team.